Hey guys, it's Krista Tyus here, and in today's video, I want to talk about how to scale your business for massive growth. So, quite a few, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, we get to a phase where, you know, we start working and providing our service or product, and then it comes a time where we're like, man, I wish I can just scale this up and just get in as many clients as I can, and kind of put everything on autopilot. I think a lot of people are very fascinated with the idea of like passing of income of creating like passive products and things like that that you can you know put on autopilot and scale up and just have what they call mailbox money or sleep coin right where you're just getting paid in your sleep you're just you know collecting checks without putting um, without really exchanging time for money um, in order to kind of get to that level there are you know key very key steps that you need to take and to consideration that you actually need to have in place before you can truly scale your service. So one of the things that I always ask my clients is, okay, one, you know, does your service actually solve a problem? So, you know, if you're talking about like bookkeeping, accounting, um, tax, tax preparation, you know, there are tons, you know, millions, um, you uh, probably not millions, um, but hundreds of thousands of people that can provide that exact same service. So for you, it's really identifying one, your your core audience, like who is the industry that you're going to go go after? What niche are you really going to pioneer and really become the best in? And that's how you're going to really, really pinpoint the pains and problems of that particular niche. Now, once you do that, and you really understand how your service can actually help them solve their problem, their problem could be making more money or reducing their tax liability or you know completing a merger and acquisition or succession planning whatever the case may be you have to you have to be very clear about what your service is doing for this particular niche that you want to go after so if you have that that's the first check now the second thing that I have written down here before you can actually scale your business for massive growth is do you have a clear marketing message so a lot of times you know a lot of people first they miss the they miss the step altogether on selecting and honing in on a niche right so it's really hard to develop a clear marketing message that speaks to your ideal client if you don't know who you're talking to right if you don't know who is the beneficiary of this service how is it actually helping them make or save money it's really very hard to articulate your value proposition like what differentiates you from the competition so in order for you to really go to the market and for you to scale your services where in scaling and we'll get into that in just a few minutes on what exactly that means in order for you to reach a wider audience you have to be clear on your marketing message and in, in order for you to be clear on your marketing message you have to be clear on the niche that you are um, actually going after you know the the industry that you want to pioneer now the third thing that I have written down here in order to scale for massive growth is do you have systems and processes in place right you know when we get into to business you know our first couple of clients we are trying to really figure out our system we're trying to figure out our workflow our process and in order for you to take on a lot more clients at scale you have to have key people in place right like who's going to actually help you facilitate growth is it um, an admin is it an assistant bookkeeper or an assistant tax professional is it a social media manager um, is it an operations manager whatever the case may be you need to make sure one do you have have the key people in place in order for you to actually scale your service because if you're trying to scale a solo shop just a one person shop is going to be super hard you're going to be setting yourself up for failure so you need to make sure that you do have key a key person or people in place that can actually help you to facilitate growth now the second part to this is your systems and your workflow you know do you have a step-by-step -step checklist on how you're actually going to onboard a client and how you're actually going to complete the client work because this is where the bottleneck typically happens 
happens for most service-based professionals, especially bookkeepers, accountants, tax professionals. Um, they, they have a bottleneck in their business when it comes to their service. So you can get the business. After a while, you know, you learn marketing. You, you, you know, you're clear on your niche. You're clear on your offer. You're clear on the types of channels that you're utilizing in order to um, attract your ideal clients. Now when you actually get into doing the work, doing the bookkeeping, the accounting, the taxes, you are your own bottleneck. So it's really helpful if you have, you know, a step-by-step, -step, you know, checklist, a step-by-step -step way on a one, how you're actually onboarding a client. So when you onboard a client, you know, you know, how are you making that process seamless? How are you getting client information, source documents, such as their W-2s, their monthly receipts, their bank statements? How are you getting source documents in a timely fashion that's not only convenient for you, but that's also convenient for the business owner that you're working with? You have to have your onboarding down pack to a T because the worst thing that you can do is go back and forth with a business owner asking for source documents or asking you know for clarification on what is this and you know what I'm saying like that's going to be the quickest way to annoy potential clients so you want to make sure that your onboarding process it requires as little steps as possible okay and after you onboard the client how are you actually completing the client work now if you start to document this and you really start to look at you know what is the first thing that I'm doing in order to reconcile the bank statement what's the second thing that I'm doing in order to run the financial statements if you really start documenting your workflow when it's really time to ramp up and scale and you hire additional people on your team you already have some you know built out workflows that they can just mimic and learn and implement so this is where you need to have your procedures in place your accounting procedures or your tax you know procedures that you are actually implementing for your clients so when you're really ready to scale and to start servicing and onboarding you know uh, you know 5 10 15 plus clients per month and that's like bookkeeping and accounting right if you're talking about tax preparation you could potentially onboard 10 people per day. So, but you you have to have the key people, the processes, the workflow, and uh, you know, that onboarding definitely in place if you wanna be able to scale your business up, okay? Now, the fourth thing that I have on here after your systems and processes is do you have revenue, right? Do you, are you currently making money? Because in order for you to actually scale, which means to invest in paid advertising, you have to have revenue because it's going to cost you money to acquire a customer. You know, when you invest in Facebook ads or when you invest in Instagram ads or LinkedIn or if you're doing Google AdWords, whatever your marketing methods are, you really want to make sure that one, you, you everything that I, the list that I just went over, um, but most importantly that you have a revenue coming in, which means if you can't go out right now and get clients practically for free, you should not be acquiring clients through paid channels, right? So if you can't go out right now with your marketing message, with the problem that you're solving, who you're solving it for, if you can't go out right this week and get some clients, then you should not even be thinking about investing in paid advertising because you have to have all of those key foundations in place in order for paid advertisement to be really profitable for you. So you're just gonna be losing money if you don't have those key foundation pieces already. Now the reason why pay advertising you know, we, we really encourage you to have a revenue first. Even the clients that work with me, I don't start them off on on Facebook ads. You know, we don't go straight. I teach Facebook ads as a way to um, build up your list, as a way to attract your ideal clients. Yes, but that is not the first step that we go to. We actually go to the market organically and we talk to people, our ideal clients, and we onboard clients practically practically for free. So it, it costs money. It just costs a little sweat equity. It costs your time and energy. So if you can't do that, then you definitely aren't ready for paid ads. Now, if you have all of these key you know steps in place that I just went over, just now, you know, you know what problem you're solving. You have a niche. Um, you have your systems and processes in place. You have a clear marketing message. You have a clear value proposition on how you're actually differentiating yourself from the competition. Your marketing message is clear and it actually resonates with your ideal clients. Um, and you have revenue, 
now we can scale. Now we can throw some money at Facebook ads. Now we can look at Google AdWords. Now we can look at, look at LinkedIn ads, um, Instagram ads, and really start to ramp up and get more traffic into an already built out process because you already have the capacity to actually onboard clients. You already have the systems and workflows and you have the revenue to actually invest in those paid advertising channels. Now, the last thing with actually investing in paid ads, such as Facebook ads for instance because I think most of you are familiar with how Facebook ads work you know most Facebook makes it dangerously easy to boost a post uh, which is to their benefit not yours <laughs> because they you know that's how they make money they make money from their advertisers so when it comes to actually investing in Facebook ads, you know, you, you're going to spend, um, there are a few KPIs that you want to be familiar with, such as, you know, your cost per lead, right? And typically your cost per lead, which is just the cost to acquire a name, an email address, would probably be anywhere between a dollar and $15, you know, depending on what type of service or product that you're offering. Um, but one of the major KPIs that I pay attention to is actually my cost to acquire a customer um, your customer acquisition cost now this number is important is because this is how much you're actually paying Facebook or any other marketing channel to actually acquire a customer so you know this this is an important KPI because if your service is only let's just say you're trying to get more tax clients and you're, you want to use Facebook ads for that and your tax fee is only two hundred dollars okay now, if your cost to acquire a customer on Facebook is $198, you're making $2 per tax return. Actually, you're losing money because you have to take in consideration the time and energy that it takes for you to actually do the tax return, to follow up with the client, to, um, you know, you have to take in consideration the software that you use. So in order for Facebook ads or any other type of advertising to be truly profitable for you, you need to have, you know, a two plus ROI. Um, and that means your cost to acquire a customer needs to be way less than how much you're actually charging the lifetime value of the customer. So for instance, if you're um, advertising for bookkeeping clients and you are charging, let's just say $500 a month and you have a clear marketing message, you know what niche you're going after, everything is, is lined up to the T, okay? And let's just say your cost to acquire a customer is $1,000. You spend $1,000 to acquire one bookkeeping client. Now, does that make sense? Would that make sense if this bookkeeping client was paying you $500 per month? Yeah, the, it, could put, it could definitely make sense for you because you have to look at the lifetime value. One, over a year um, time, this, this client is going to be paying you $6,000, so 500 times 12. So if you um, break even, so when you break even, you're going to be breaking even after month two of having this client. So yes, Facebook advertising would definitely make sense as long as your price for services justifies the cost to actually acquire a customer, right? So you don't want to have, like I said, a service that's only $200 and it's costing you $250 to acquire a customer, right? And your lifetime value is just $200. You would be losing money and that's the quickest way to go broke. And actually, a lot of people do go broke on Facebook ads because they... They actually underestimate how much it costs to acquire a customer. And I had to learn this, you know, through, you know, luckily I learned it to act, actually through pay, paying for coaching and services for people that are experts at Facebook ads. But you can get upwards to a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars to acquire one customer from Facebook. Now, it makes sense if your program is two thousand dollars or five thousand dollars, if your service is, you know, fifty five hundred dollars and you're doing tax resolution like that makes absolute sense sense but for the majority of people they're trying to really scale too fast before they're actually ready to and then they're actually um, losing money because they underestimated how much it actually costs to acquire a client all right guys so that's it for thursday's video every thursday at 6 p.m ish eastern standard time um i go live so you could definitely join me um if you if you really want to get more clients you know you really want to learn how to use facebook and linkedin um and other social 
social media channels to actually attract your ideal clients, have telephone consultations with these people and actually onboard them, let's hop on a free marketing strategy session. So I set some time aside this week and next week to connect with a few more people. So you can go ahead and click the link below this video, book a day and time with me. You're gonna fill out a quick little application just so I can understand a little bit more about your business. But I'm gonna actually tell you what's really required in order for you to hit your income goals. You know, whether you wanna make $10,000, $20,000 plus per month, like what is truly required for you to attract and actually onboard those types of clients. All right, guys, it's been great. Hi, guys. Hey, Danielle. Hey, Yolanda. Hey, my Sheree. I'll see you guys next week and have a great rest of the day. Bye.